Remax Diamond Realty. All right, boys and girls, we are coming to you with a very fantastic topic. This one, Liz, from Remax Diamond Realty, half a day. Half a day. This one was actually brought up by our very own creative director, Jamil, on the back, who yes. was kind of talking about these things because, you know, he, he's very aware of, of property and of the real estate market. Mm -hmm. And he was actually asking, what are some of the parameters about if you have leased property and say you, you have you have property, because you've, you've got tons of property. Mm -hmm. You own half of Guam at this point, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say you lease it to me, I am your tenant. Yes. And then I actually say... I want to be what is in my mind creative and entrepreneurial and I wind up turning it into, I list it on Airbnb to Jamil or to Marcus, our camera guy and everything Well, like that. just remember if you own property and you, uh, and let's say I own the property and I'm leasing it to you, remember the lease is specific to who the occupants are. Your lease will state it's going, that Jason Salas is occupying this house with let's say three other people. Mm -hmm. The only occupants of the home would be yourself and the three other people that were listed on the lease agreement. Now, if later you decide that you want it to turn the home into an uh, Airbnb, that is in violation of the lease agreement. And I had a situation where someone called me from the States and said, my grandson was going through the website and he said, Grandma, you're leasing your home for Airbnb? And she was appalled. So she called me and of course I had to contact the tenant to say that is in violation of your lease. So That's improper subletting because I know on most you, leases they have a clause. It says you cannot sublease you cannot the sub property. Lease, right. Now, of course, if the lease states that you as a tenant will be turning the property into an Airbnb and it's specifically stated in the lease agreement, uh, then, you know, that would be fine. But you also have to look at your neighborhood and go through the proper government of Guam agencies to see is it in conformance? Can you do that within that particular neighborhood? Mm -hmm. So for example, some of the condos in Tumon um, does not allow for that. So that if someone started to rent it for Airbnb, not knowing the rules and the guidelines mm -hmm. or the policies of the, the complex, uh, they may even be in violation of the homeowners association. Would it have to be listed as a you talk about all the time between residential, agricultural, and you know industrial and business property. Would it have to be listed as a business because... When you go to get your license, mm. you are getting a license for an Airbnb, which is a business. Right. Yes. And if it's just like you know a garden variety apartment and everything like right. that, you're also misclassifying it right. in addition to possibly right. like right. illegally subletting it. So your lease is specific to the use of the property. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are zoning guidelines that affect that. If it's an R2, which is a multifamily residential, which could be rented as a duplex or as an apartment building, that fits within the zone guidelines. Uh, the Airbnb, of course, this is fairly new on Guam. It's been going on for a number of years. And I know some neighborhoods, they've had people who complained about um, people who are coming and going in the neighborhood when it's supposed to be a single family residence. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I would recommend if someone was looking at doing an Airbnb, go to the government, find out what are the guidelines in order to do that. And also your lease has to be specific. So usually, uh, you know, when we get people who are doing commercial leases, they will state uh, the lease is subject to the government approvals. The lease is subject to getting a license. So as long as they're able to get those in place, then they can continue with the lease. Okay. If, if for some reason the government says, I'm sorry, you can't do it, then your lease cannot move forward. Now, we've been working together on this show for like six years already. You know, you know the way my mind works. I'm always thinking, what, if, <laughs> what about this, what about this, what yeah. about this, right? How about if, um, because you said the lease agreement will say specifically certain people. So yes. say it's Jason Silas's property and I'm only allowed to have the following tenants, Marcus, Peter, yes. and Carlito, right? And yes. it's only that. What happens if I say I sponsor a... University, uh, a student who's going to the university, or or I or I become like a foster. So parent. if you want it to add, or let's say you got married and you added your wife to the lease, so well what, that's long term. I'm thinking something even more, even more, um, something more ephemeral, like only for maybe a year or maybe like a few then, months. Then what we would do is do an addendum to the lease agreement, and we would say uh, the lease uh, occupants of the uh, occupants to be to be added to the lease would be. Simon or whoever, mm -hmm. add them to the lease for a period of one year. So everything you do with the home, 
you definitely have to get the approval of the owner. So an addendum could be prepared. The first thing I would do is call the owner and say, hey, Jason want to add, uh, wants to add his nephew to the lease. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we'll prepare the addendum. We'll that, just move from the States for a year. Yes, only. and then we'll add to the addendum that uh, Simon is added to the lease agreement mm -hmm. for a period of one year. Okay. So addendums could be added to the lease, provided the owner approves it, then to execute it, both parties have to sign. Okay, I'm very paranoid, but actually, after talking to you, it seems like this really isn't that big of a deal. You just have to document you it properly. You just have to document, make sure everything is in place. Because what you don't want to do is lease it and then find out you can't, for your intent and purposes, it can't, it's, it, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, your intent and purposes uh, can't be completed because... Uh, the government says you can't do this. All right. So, yeah. so simply stated, simply, know your lease agreement and then don't break it. And ask questions. Go to the government agencies to say, can I do this? And is the zone, does the zone allow for this particular purpose? There you go. Thank you as always. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And we appreciate you, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. This lineup is brought to you by IT&E.